Okay, so we are now recording. This is the third session of our Rose of Westhaven Lamentations of the Flame Princess Chronicle. And before we jump straight into the mobtastic action, I'm going to ask Johannes to give us a quick recap of what went on in session two. Right, so in session two, we uh, well settled our debts with the lighthouse keeper, Thackeray West, and uh, hitched a ride with him to the small village of Porthcrawl, uh, where we sort of set up shop at the local uh, public house to rest and recuperate. That didn't really work out <laughs> as we planned, but um, yeah, we went there. Uh, we laid down our very injured friend, uh, Marco the Elf, and um, set about, well, discovering the village and... Um, well, we visited the church, saw the, um, the priest. Uh, there was a fair amount of interesting gold items uh, related to the church and the blessings thereof, and interesting symbology relating to more water themes than we expected from the church. And um, uh, Edwin went to the tower of the sage Salazar and discover that there were royalists there and yet another one of these undead weapons, presumably. Uh, <clears throat> uh, given that Port Crawl is, is not leaning in the royalist direction in the civil war that the land is undergoing currently, um, the, <laughs> the ne'er-do-wells uh, decided to uh, go, cause a riot, basically. <laughs> by uh, revealing to the <clears throat> the whole village, basically, uh, at the blessing of the fruits of the sea in the evening, uh, that some royalists have infiltrated their village and they're trying to do some evil stuff. Uh, so now it's pitchfork and torch time. And then, while all this stuff is going on, people are going to get lynched. Um, our friend Mark the Elf got hitched, I guess, uh, at the tavern uh, with uh, the tavern keeper's wife, I think. Yep. Uh, they had a, a, a nice night there, um, which resulted in uh, a nightmarish sleep for the good elf, from which he will presumably awaken. Okay, thank you very much. So we're going to pick up this session with Marku the Elf, as mentioned. So Marku, you've woken up from this nightmarish dream of this black tentacled monstrosity dragging you down into the depths. You've sat up, bolt upright in your bed, sweat beading your face. You, you know that you're not very rested at all. You can still feel the aches in your bones and the injuries sustained in the sea caves from the unholy cadaverous creature that scarred your flesh. As you look out of the window, you see in the moonlight shining down the mob of villagers streaming towards Sage Salazar's tower. And you can just about make out in the sort of light of the torches that some of them are carrying an armoured figure with a small boy next to him that you recognise as Edwin. And you can just about see the in the shining of the torchlight this shock of fiery red hair of this smaller figure sort of walking along behind him. You hurry down out of the tavern they since it's taken them a while to organize they've not got very far and they start streaming towards the tower as you run to catch them up so if you all look at your roll 20 window effectively as the mob reaches the tower you're all there with the exception of william who has headed off to the to to, to pray after a sense at the the local church the church of uh, holy repose in porth crawl as you've just you've just about caught them up, Marku, as they get to the the tower of Sage Salazar, you can see this elderly gentleman, long white beard, dark skin, leaning on a staff, stood outside the front door of the tower as this mob, led by the young figure of Father York, 
stream towards his tower holding these torches and you recognize the figure leaning on the staff as the sage salazar now mark you can see sasha just up in front of you ahead of her is edwin Locke with the young boy barden the apprentice of salazar sort of almost clinging to his leg to be honest since the this young lad still looks like he's frightened half out of his wits so as you catch them up is there anything you particularly do marco you're breathing quite heavily because you're still very injured it's it's over to you guys you've got a, a couple of minutes before you all get to the tower i pull my my big wide brimmed hat down a bit try and cover my ears and, and hold my coat close i'm shivering slightly um from my recent dream and i sort of run over to sasha as quickly and directly as i could since i see her faster bam, 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 bam. there you go Okay, as you run over to Sasha, there's a f for a few minutes in the flickering of the torchlight, mm -hmm. the shadows cast by this mob of villagers seem to sort of writhe and move on the space between yourself and Sasha, causing you to sort of, it reminds you of the black tentacles that reached up and grasped mm -hmm. your legs in your dream. For a few moments, you're about to, you sort of flinch almost involuntarily, like you can't help yourself as you, you're reminded of the dream which had just started to fade into your memory. And then, as the torch lights flicker again, you can see it's just the flickering shadows. It's no phantasm reaching out of the nightmare world for you. I sort of reach over. Is, is Sasha taller than me or shorter than me? I don't know the height wise, what difference we are. How, how tall is Marco? I'm quite tall. I'm like knee six foot, six foot a bit. Well, that's his brother. He's shorter than you. Okay. So I sort of girl. like almost, almost fall into her arms. Like I sort of stumble and grab her by the shoulder. <laughs> What's what the hell's going on? What have you? Why the town riled up? And saying a few is something at the beach? Is something come out of the sea? What? Why is everyone so angry? We might need to flee this place. Uh, um. He's he in a wild panic, like you've never seen him. Like yeah. he's, he's paler than usual. Sa Sasha, you, should... you can see that Marku is obviously still suffering from his injuries. He, you see his beads of sweat on his face. He, he's breathing quite heavily. Should we even be out now? She supports him with with an arm. I mean, it don't look too good. I'm not good. I'm not good at all. But when I saw these. I saw the town in an uproar. This hasn't been has been incident like this since uh, the riots of twenty two. <laughs> oh, uh, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, um, um, we're going to the tower and um, defeat the royalists. Yeah, royalists. Uh. What? What has royalists done? Why? What? As Sasha says, oh, you know, royalists. Yeah, a few of the people in this mob sort of like. Sh shout out in a similar vein and wave these torches. You see a few pitchforks thrust up into the air and sort of har harpoons for fishing as people are like, Oh, get the royalists! She leans into him and whispers, Just go with it. I mean, <laughs> royalists! <roar. laughs> Sasha, Sasha, the t this could burn the entire town down. Yeah, I know. I thought the and idea was supposed to lay low. Well, the hell? Yeah, and now the idea is to do this, so we can, you know, loot it. Okay, as you reach this point in the conversation, you've reached the front of the tower. You can see Salazar stood out the front, and as the as the mob approaches, he, he's like leaning on his staff. He's obviously quite old. He's slightly hunched over as he as he's leaning on his staff, and he holds up his he holds up a hand in a sort of placating gesture, and he's like, "Please, please, my my friends." What, what, what is all this? Uh, what, what is what is the problem here? You see, like Father York's been trying to sort of like calm down the crowd a bit as they've been like moving, but he's largely been unsuccessful. Not been helped by the fact that every few minutes Sasha's like, "Yeah, boy, this, yeah, get away this." At which point, someone in the crowd shouts out, "We know you've got royalists in there, Salazar. Bring them out, or we'll go in and take them." And there's a, a loud sort of like jeering and shouting from the crowd as several of them wave their, their various implements. Edwin Barden sort of like clings closer to you as the crowd starts getting like really riled up. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I lean down and I, I, well, there's quite a lot of noise. So basically I'm just shouting into his ears like, keep your dagger ready. He sort of holds it in his hand, but you can see like his hands are like really like trembling. 
it, yeah. it's safe to say that even if you didn't have your extensive military training, mm -hmm. it is probably not going to be a great deal of use with this dagger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, just... so Salazar sort of like he's still trying to calm down the crowd. He's like, "Please, my my friends, you you all know me. I have I've ministered to many of you in your illnesses. I." I trade my herbs from my garden in in your village to help keep you all healthy. What, what reason could I could I possibly have to to harbor to harbor royalists in in my tower? I I have I I am a, a I was not born in these lands. At which point, there's a few jeers from the crowd. I have no reason to 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 have any dealings with the royalists. You know, too, a few people in the crowd seem to have been a little bit won over by what he's saying, as he sort of said, "Oh, you know me. I've like helped you in the village. I've like ministered to your ill and your wounded, etc." A few of them do sort of calm down a little bit. They're obviously remembering that, like, yeah, he has helped them in the past, and it seems to take a little bit of like the wind out of out of the mob's sails as they sort of like they they slow down from this like angry run, so they're more just sort of like walking towards him now. As as the, he says that. I mean, can we see anything uh, moving in the in the window above the above the door? No, you, as you sort of like you sort of peer around people and you look through it, all you can see is that it ba that basically there's a, a corridor opposite it, but you, you can't see anything sort of untoward in that corridor. And I'll reveal the okay the corridor. There you go. If you have nothing to hide, old man, show us what you got inside. A couple of the people echo this as you say it, and Salazar is like, um, "Please, I, you, you all know me, my friends. I, I, ha I, I say I deal with many hazardous materials in my works. I have many delicate experiments underway in my laboratory. It, if you were to simply storm in there, it, it would not be safe for you. If, if you wish to, if you wish to." Yes, yes. <laughs> She breaks up. No doubt the delegates of the royalists. A few people are like, He's the trying royalists. to hide the royalists from us. Let's go in there and take them. And they start to say, Father York's like almost trying to like hold them back. Although, given that he's a fairly slight framed young man, if the whole crowd decides to just like rush past him, Father York is not going to stop them. But but he's I'm like, gonna... he's like please, please, my, please, my friend, does the Lord not, not teach us that, that we must be generous to, to our neighbours and though, and we must behave unto them as we wish they would behave unto please please my friends i appeal to you for calm please uh, i'm going to be on the lookout if the crowd is going to start going in uh, i'm going to try and yank york out of the way so he doesn't get trampled or killed by the advancing what was the like a recent famous battle between the royalists and the parliamentarians where the royalists slaughtered them Okay, side. can you roll me a d6, please, Dennis? Mm, I can try. Yeah. Okay, if you would like to improvise the name of a recent battle and the, the rougher details of it, I will say that there indeed has been a recent battle. I presume you're going to be like, remember the battle of blah, 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 and like, try and rile them up, effectively. Yeah. Remember the battle of the broken bridge? You cannot trust the royalists. Get him. Okay, let me just write that down. Okay, so as you say, I oh, remember the Battle of the Broken Birch. Get him. There is a roar from the crowd and they start surging forwards. As they do so, obviously having prepared yourself, Edwin, you are able to uh -huh. grab Father York and you sort of pull him over to the side. There we go, let's stick him there. Let's have a little dance of the tokens as we move them about. This crowd, yeah. <laughs> this crowd, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move the crowd token all the time because it'll be ridiculous. But the crowd basically surges forward. You see Salazar get sort of knocked to the ground on the other side of them as this crowd pretty much tramples over him here himself please my friends oh, 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 and he like falls down underneath this rampaging crowd there's a dry snapping sound as someone 
possibly accidentally, possibly on purpose, you don't know, steps on his walking stick. It cracks loudly, and you see him without its aid, he sort of tumbles to the ground, landing in the soft mud and grass, sort of moaning gently. His cries drowned out by the shouting and chanting of these villagers as they literally just sort of smash through the door pretty much and start sort of rumbling into the tower you can hear the sounds of like things being knocked over and you hear the sound of breaking glass as these villagers sort of surge inside that's it's not gonna go with them she's gonna stay um yeah Behind luck. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Although I'm not going to move uh, the token, I'll put an X over the villager token so you yeah. see they're all inside. Uh, she's, she's, since he's supporting Marco, she's going to bring him along. Okay, that's absolutely fine. I'll move Marco up for you. There we go. Okay, so as these villagers are basically smashing their way around inside, and Salazar's like lying in the mud. Are you doing anything particular, Edwin? You've pulled Father York out of the way, and he's like, "Oh, oh, thank you, th thank you, thank you, my friend. I, I, I try and put, I try my best to, to, to calm them down, but uh... yeah, there seems to be some uh, rebel rousers in your in your crew. So I know, I know, I, I know, a number of them lost a, lost family members in the the, the battle of the Broken Birch. If I had hoped that those wounds had started to heal, but uh, apparently the, the the scars still run deep, and with with, with Salazar b being a stranger to the oh, oh my God, S Salazar, I've, I've got I've got to see if he's he's okay, and he stops sort of like running across the open ground towards where this man's sort of like lying on the ground still. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna go with him. Okay, feel free to move yourself across. Okay, so as you get to where he is, Edwin, you can see like Father York sort of helped has helped Salazar up into a seated position. You can see this sort of old man. I mean, well, since he's my cover, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with him. Yep. If you want to move yourself over as well, Marku, you can. I'm going to move Barden over since he's like sticking like glue to Edwin. Okay, so as you guys sort of get to him, you can see this old man. I mean, bear in mind that the sort of the normal like lifespan of the time, like if you live to like sort of twenty five, you're like doing well. This guy looks as though he's is at least fifty five years old, and it looks like he's had like a hard fifty five years of life. He's not had an easy life. He's, you see, as he sits up, his hands are sort of slightly twisted and arthritic. He has a deeply lined face with this long sort of straggly white beard he's wearing a almost like a night a dark blue night cap on his head and what looks like a gown as though he was like just getting ready for bed when you guys are like rumbled up and he's like oh what's what's that noise i go out oh, oh it's a mob but but as he's helped as he's helped into a sitting position he's like oh uh, for, for, thank you uh, for, thank you uh father what what, 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 what what is what what is all this? I I I don't I do not understand why why have the the villagers turned on me in this way? I've have, I've have never sought to do anything other than kindness to the the villagers of Porth Crawl. Father York looks so he's he's going to say something, but he's he's struggling with words as though he doesn't really know how to like break this down to Salazar. He's just like. I, <coughs> Good sage, <clears throat> waste no time or words. Tell me now, did you or did you not have royalist soldiers here earlier today? It, he looks at you and he he, pour, he sort of screws his eyes up a little bit as though he's maybe a little bit short-sighted and he's sort of mm -hmm. trying to like make out your features. And then he he pauses for a few moments and he looks at you and he says... If there were royalists here, my friend, and I was free to tell you that they were, I certainly would do. Mm. Mm. So at that, I would I would go in the tower. I need to see this for myself. Okay, not a problem. Sorry. Edwin, can you move yourself to just outside the door? 
Okay, you're just getting out up towards the door, Edward, when suddenly there is this blood curdling scream from inside the tower. The door in front of you swings open and this crowd of like panicked villagers, like not carrying the pitchforks of their torches anymore, mm-hmm. just come like charging out, sort of like falling over each other, like almost in a panic, like a stampede trying to get out of the way. Uh, you <laughs> I mean, you, you, you can hear them thundering towards the door, so you've got time to like dodge out of the way and like sidestep them, etc. But they look absolutely terrified. As they do the Sasha is going, no, it, no. That's just... okay, you, you're like, remember the Battle of Broken Birch? And they're like, ah! And start <laughs> streaming past you. That bridge, though! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they all look absolutely terrified. From inside, Edwin, you can see that looking th- through the open door down into the corridor inside and you can see a little bit more of the tower now I'll sort of reveal that to you you can see that a couple of them have dropped their torches and a couple of like a few couple of wall hangings have caught fire so I'll draw those in for you in a lovely yellow colour there we go there we go and you see there's like a, a couple of others have landed on the floor but since the floorboards aren't quite as readily flammable they've just started to like smolder the wood you can see there's already like smoke has started to like build up in the tower uh-huh. you can see from the look of the tower that it looks as though the people who went in sort of went through this door there so you can see it sort of still open a bit but they obviously sort of like flung it behind them and it sort of uh-huh. swung shut a little you can still hear the sound of sort of glass breaking and what sounds like splintering wood from inside the room beyond it, but you can't see what's in there. Okay, and, Adam, uh, Adam no, did he go with uh, Edwin or is he standing? Because if he, if he went with Ed, Edwin, Sasha's going to pull him back. Yeah, he looked as though he was going to follow Edwin and then you sort of grabbed his arm and pulled him back. No, oh, stay here. Okay, at this point, I'm going to cut across briefly to William. William, you've gone to the Church of Peaceful Repose. Most of the village of Porthcrawl is very quiet at the minute since most people are either in bed or they're part of this mob that's like charged off towards the tower. So the, the village is pretty much dark and deserted as you're heading through it. And you've been to the church before, you know where it is. As you head up to it, you can see the church with its many sort of, with a couple of sort of stained glass windows, the, the wooden door at the front of it. It's a fairly simple building. It's not like an elaborate building like those of the old faithful Jews. The, the church of the West Haven is very much a sort of, they don't have a lot of idols they don't have a lot of statutory and stuff like that which is probably why the these sort of weird like fish like tokens attracted your attention so much mm. but as you as you head up to it the church is in darkness you can't see any signs that there's any one home basically okay um i'm trying to um stay hidden as much as possible and try to find um, some kind of entrance and check if the doors are open. Okay, would you like to make a roll to see how successful you've been about being stealthy? Sure. Okay, excellent. So you're creeping up to the door, did you say, or...? Yeah, I tried to find an entrance. Is there more than one entrance? You can see that there, like many of the of the the churches that um, once belonged to the old faith, but have since been sort of repurposed by the Church of West Haven, the now predominant faith in the land. It was originally built alongside the using the methodology of the old faith so it has two entrances one at the front which was for people to enter and symbolically there was another entrance at the side for the the priests and they the as the old faith teaches for the the holy spirit to enter into the church there are actually two entrances to the church okay um i think i try the front entrance first if i can reach it without um drawing too much attention Yep, you can see you can see that there there appears to be 
pretty much no one about at the moment. You wait for an opportune moment as clouds drift across the moon, muting its light for a few moments, and you creep up to the front door. You can see no candles burning in the windows of the church. You sort of test the door gently, being careful to, to make no sound. You can feel that it is locked. Okay, I um, sneak up to the side entrance and check that too. Okay, you head up to the side entrance as well. That also appears to be locked. You're pretty you're pretty sure though that no one has witnessed you doing any of this. Okay. Um how far is the church away from the next um normal building? It's a fair distance away because the the church is sort of the central like focal point. So it, it tends to be seen as though it will be like disrespectful to to God to build anything else too close to the church. So there's a fair amount of open ground around it. Ah, fuck it. I try to um, pry open the side door with my crowbar. Okay, go for it. Um, what should I roll for this? Okay. Just a d6? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Okay, yeah, that is fine. You pull out your crowbar. You you try the side door since it's like a little smaller and you think a little bit easier to like jimmy open the big main yeah, like wooden door. Exactly. And you put it in and you sort of brace it and press all of your weight against it. And after a few moments, there is a clunk <coughs> as you pretty much are able to like force the lock. You, you put your hand against the door and sort of gently open it, careful not to make any sound. Okay, um, I try to hush inside and look out if somebody heard me, hurt me. Okay, you look around, but there doesn't appear to be anyone out of the streets when I'm rushing to investigate what you're doing. In fact, you can't really see anyone out and about in the village at all at the moment. And as, okay. you, as you head into the church, you see the church layout as described previously, this long central aisle with these pews all the way down it for people to sit in, and this altar at the front. You can see a few candles unlit on the altar at the front there they're sort of burned down low they were presumably used in the days ceremonies perhaps the perhaps uh, the good father york was hoping to clear them away when he got back from the blessings of the evening's catch but well we all know how that turned out but you, okay. don't, you don't see any signs of anyone living. Occasionally you hear like a bit of a skittering noise. And as you look up, you'll see the occasional like rat run across the, the huge wooden beams that hold up the roof. Rats being something that's very common in a, a village like this, where like hygiene's basic, to put it mildly. Okay. Um, I try to remember where the box was where he kept these trinkets. Yeah, you, you know that it was basically like placed sort of behind the altar, and as you head round the altar, and you, which is just a, it's pretty much just like a, a concrete block. The altar it looks so it once might have had carvings of some sort on it, but they've been very deliberately sort of chipped away. So now it's just like a plain stone block. Uh, so this basically used to be something else, maybe. Indeed. Now, you would know, because obviously you've been about a bit, you would know that it was it's quite common knowledge that when the when the Church of West Haven was founded and they rejected the idolatry of the old faith, when they repurposed a lot of these churches, if they couldn't just sort of like get rid of some of the bits and pieces of like the altar or they wanted to reuse them, a lot of times they would simply seek to remove... Sorry, carvings. the connection is pretty... Sorry, the, the connection was pretty bad... Okay, no problems. You I, can, I, can, out. I can repeat it. You would know that when the Church of West Haven repurposed these churches from the old faith, they sort of deliberately got rid of a lot of the idols and the carvings. So if they wanted to like keep the altar, they would probably have carved off like whatever was on it before to make it more simple mm -hmm. and so that it wasn't sort of idol. It wasn't using an idol. Okay. But as you look around it, you can um, see this. Yeah, small... I'm looking for the box. Okay. Yeah. As you look behind it, you can see this small metal box behind it you can see it has a, a lock and a key on it i turn the key yeah not a problem you turn the key you suspect that the the father must have absent-mindedly left the key in perhaps or maybe as i said earlier he was hoping to just nip out to a quick blessing and come back so he didn't really worry about it after all the doors were locked 
you turn the key you open this box up and inside you see a number of these there's a number of sort of items which are used for the basic day-to-day -day sort of church services uh, water in glass vials um, bread etc and amongst them are half a dozen of these small pendants these golden fish pendants with these caricatured like human faces on them okay i take all of them not a problem note down that you have six golden fish pendants seven in total oh yeah of course not counting the one that you got earlier obviously yeah. You're like Mr. Fish at the minute. You're like you've got all the fishes. Okay, um, and then I close the box again and um, turn the key and try to look for the idol they got before. Maybe there's a room in the back or something. Okay, you have a look around, and you do indeed find that there are quarters for presumably Father York. Sort of built at the back of the church it's like an extra sort of couple of rooms that he would live in and as you sort of the door to this the quarters isn't locked so as you push through into there you can see it's effectively just like a a small home built onto the church he's got a a couple of pictures there there is his holy book sat on a bedside table no doubt a bit of light bedtime reading for the good father there's a fairly simple sort of meal a little bit of bread a little bit of cheese some some salted meat on a a clay sort of plate on the, the bedside table that it, it was no doubt left for when he got back everything else is fairly sort of uninteresting you know just clothes um, bed sheets etc normal stuff you find in a house Looking around, you don't, as you have a quick glance around, see any signs of the idol in here. Okay. Uh, should I roll to search or describe what I'm doing? Describe what you're doing. Okay. Um, I'm trying to um, look at be, um, under all the tables, under the bed. I'm trying to um, look behind um, furniture, stuff like that okay not a problem you you search around and as you re as you're going through like a a wooden chest of drawers which you've got his clothes in as you're sort of like moving around and you're looking around and you're obviously like tapping on things and look around you tap on the bottom of one of the drawers and it sounds hollow as though it's got like a false bottom in it okay um i'm trying to find the mechanism how to open the false um, compared to okay, okay as, you, as you feel around in the drawer you feel that there's a a small metal loop at the back of the drawer you think perhaps if something's like hooked under that and pulled upwards it would pop the the false bottom out mm, i'm looking through my stuff if i got something um maybe my um lamp would have a hook for something like that or um, that would be a possibility or a knife you could certainly use a knife that's not a problem just put the edge under it okay. and flip it up you do okay. so and the mm -hmm. the false bottom pops up and you can see that underneath sort of resting on a bed of cloth is this idol that you saw previously this this strange sort of like squid like almost sort of like aquatic sort of idol again with humanoid characteristics Nice. Okay, I take it and close the compadre again. And I'm looking around. Does this room also look like it used to be part of the old church? Just repurposed? It, it looks as though it was once part of the old church, although you think it was probably, maybe it was um, used for confessions or sort of private consultations with the priests, but there's not as much signs of sort of like things being defaced in here. It looks as though the room's just been like redecorated effectively. But as you're sort of like looking around and you lift up this idol, the cloud that had sheltered you previously drifts away from the moon. And as this sort of moonlight shines down, through the windows and you're just sort of holding this idol you can see this glittering golden sheen of this idol like almost the gold seems to like reflect in your eyes as you sort of hold it up okay i wrap it in close immediately and put it into my backpack no problems make a note that you've got a golden fish idol golden fish idol 
Done. So, um, since nobody found me yet and I still got a bit of time, I would like to um, search the walls and the floor for something hidden. Maybe there is something hidden before this church got changed. I would just take something metal and um, pound against the walls and floor. Okay, not a problem. So as you're sort of tapping around, I'm going to jump back to the others at the tower for a few moments. Sure. So you guys at the tower, you've seen these panicked people streaming out of Salazar's tower, sort of running back towards the village, like pretty much like screaming and like shouting and panicking. Edwin's like stepped out of the way as they've streamed past him and now he's peering through the door into the tower. You can still hear Edwin the sound of like splintering wood and smashing glass from this door that's sort of open a little bit but you can't see beyond it. Okay, so that's um, gonna, let's go, let's go, Edwin, let's go. Do we hear any more like human voices inside or is it just like stuff breaking? It, you can't really tell at the minute because all you can hear are like the screams and shouts of these panicked villagers as they're like running past you and like streaming yeah. towards the village. You you, right. you you could wait for a little bit until they're further away and their cries have receded. You might be able to hear something. Um, are some of them still carrying torches, or did everyone just drop what they were doing and just run out? As you as you sort of peering through the door, you can see like as well as like. The, the flames and the, the smouldering torches. Mm. There are like pitchforks and like a couple of these like harpoons that are lying there. It looks as like people mm. have just like dropped their stuff in like a mad panic and just bolted out the door. Mm. I want to fetch a burning torch from as, as close to the door as possible, but uh, I guess if the wall hangings are burning, then there's some torches quite close to the door. Yeah, so m move yourself in. Okay, at this point, I'm going to ask each of you to roll a, who's at the tower, to roll a d6 for your initiative. I will roll a d6 once you've done that for the NPC. Do we add dex? Again, with the one. No, it's just a straight d6. Oh. Jesus Christ. What's this with dexterity? It has AC range and initiative. I believe it's just a straight D6. Okay. Is it good to roll high or low? It, it's good to roll high. Woo! The elf and the girl are rolling good. Okay, let me see if I can work out how to add these to the sheet, since I seem to have forgotten from last time. Uh, Edwin with one. Okay, which is not done, that's annoying. Does it appear that Marco is armed or not, Matthew? So the way initiative works is if opposing groups roll the same number, break ties using the dexterity modifier. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so we've got Edwin, Sasha, uh, we've got Marco. Which is a shame because I could re really use a plus two on my roll. Huh? Oh well. Uh, ah, there we go. That's how you do it. Okay, I'll roll for the NPCs. Okay, so since Marku is pretty sort of badly banged up still, we're going to go with Sasha going first. So, Sasha, what do you want to do? <laughs> uh, so he's really going in. Uh, she's going to get out a pistol and curse her luck and move <coughs> over here and aim the pistol at the doorway. Edwin, get out! Okay. <laughs> this is gonna stand waiting. 
that's absolutely fine over to marco marco what are you up to so marco's like oh, this is what happens when you raise right a town like this damn humans <laughs> right so i'm gonna shifty up to the doorway just like here can i see in from that point or do i need it'll be a little bit over just you, you need to move a square to the right to be able to see in Okay, right, and I'm just going to, I'm guessing I'm a rapier that I was given, but I'm going to draw my little knife okay. and just sort of stand by the doorway and see if, if, I'm just backing basically Sasha up and Edwin, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. Whatever. Okay, not a problem, so we move on no to, we move on to the NPCs. Uh, yeah. Father York sort of steps a bit closer to Sasha, he's obviously trying to find out what's going on. As uh, York, as um, Sasha stood there with a the pistol shining, Edwin Get get out of there! You you hear the, the sort of soft and slightly sort of wheezing voice of Salazar behind you saying, P -p -p "Please, it, it is too dangerous for for you in there. You you, you need to get out of there." <laughs> At which point, uh -huh. Edwin, you the noise of the villagers has sort of faded away a bit now as they're sort of getting further and further away. Then from inside the the room. Sort of diagonally opposite you, the one that it looked like all the peasants came running out of. You hear a. The slow footfalls begin to plod towards the other side of the door. What is that, Salazar? You, as you as you say that, Sasha, you turn and you can see like Salazar's face is like paled visibly. And he's he's shaking, and he says, "I I I warned them. I warned them not to go in. I I, I told them it was too dangerous. It's not, it's not my fault. It's not my fault." And then we come to Edwin. So it sounds like it's a rather big person coming. From there, it, it's it sounds like it's a fairly sort of like large individual, and it sounds yeah. as though like they're they're sort of like dragging one of their feet behind yeah. them. Yeah. Well, uh, my presumption at this point is that this is the because I heard some stuff that led me to believe that it's it's going to be another one of those undead weapons in here. So this is, I presume that this is going to be one of them. And it sounds like it's a big one. So I uh, skedaddle <laughs> the fuck away <laughs> from from there. Uh, right about there. Oh, well, I'm under the mob. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'll remove the mob. When I do, you'll be able to see the map for like the mm -hmm. the first floor of the tower. But that's fine. I don't mind that. There we go. No. Okay, so you you see Edwin come like running out of the front door and to like move away away from it. We then move on to Sasha on the next round. Yep, that's all the things you need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Edwin is your sort of like you're doing like a sort of a, a tactical oh, yeah, see, withdrawal. See, Sasha's like mm -hmm. <laughs> straight yeah, back. See, 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 okay. she's, she's gonna <laughs> drag Baden with her. Let's go, boy. Yeah, he doesn't put up any resistance. Okay, so we're going to move on to Marku. You're stood directly next to the door, Marku. And you can hear these sort of like thumping footfalls, very slow, very plodding, sort of echoing from inside. Edwin sprints past you. Sasha dragging Barden with her, sort of sprints after him. Salazar looks as though he's like rooted to the spot. He's still not risen fully to his feet and he's looking at his own home with abject terror. Father York is sort of bending down trying to help the old man to his feet. I'm not really sure what's going on. What are you doing, Marku? Uh, does anyone have a lantern? Uh, I have a torch in my hand. Anyone got any oil? I shout, anything? I have. <laughs> <laughs> Well, our, so our someone over at the church is like, I've got your oil right here. We forgot to bring our <laughs> torch bearer here. Damn. The, the, the one thing I will remind you of, Matthew, is that if you look at the yellow bits inside, like there's some wall hangings that are already on fire. So there's certainly oh, fire, right. which is already starting to spread throughout the town, but it's spreading fairly slowly. All right. And in 
in fact I'll enlarge that a bit And the the floor was definitely wood, so there's yeah like stories under there as well. Yeah, as you're sort of looking through the door marker, you can actually see at the end of the the corridor facing you <laughs> are what appeared to be sort of like a, a spiraled wooden stairway heading upwards. You can see the the licking flames in the corridor have just reached the bottom of the wooden stairway and have started to sort of like crack and curl the varnish on the stairs. So, Edwin's come past, but Sasha's still in there. No, nope, no one's in there. Sasha, Sasha, and Edwin have just ran off. All right, Sasha, go first. Right. Well, I'm going to follow them then. I'm just going to follow them. I don't know where what's going on. Like a slow, a slowish gate. Because mm. I still like I'm confused as to why, why the town's riled up. Okay, no problem. Mo move yourself sort of roughly where you want to be in relation to Sasha and Edwin. Uh, I'll be there. Like. Okay, no problems. So as you're... I'll be shouting after him, Edwin, what the hell's in there? As you're doing that, you see Father York sort of helps Salazar to his feet, and he's following you guys, but they're moving quite slowly. Like I say, Salazar's a very old man. He doesn't have his walking stick anymore. He's having to lean on the much younger Father York. And as you're all running away, you see a, a cadaverous, rotting figure just like smashes its way out of the front of the tower you can see that it's entirely missing its left arm and it pretty much just with one hand just like smashes its way through the door and slowly lumbers out you can see sort of almost like surgical markings on it as though someone was sort of like performing an autopsy on it It's covered in thread work, sewing together bits where it's obviously been sort of opened up. As it's stumbling out, you see little bits of its gut sort of spilling out from the edges where it's popped some of these stitches. Okay, it has smashed through the door, so we go on to Edwin. And I'm going to ask Edwin, can you, before you do anything, can you please roll me a d6? And I will tell you, this is just for like the spread of the fire in the the building so that's absolutely grand now if you want to take your turn feel free <clears throat> oh boy <laughs> um <clears throat> i'm not exactly clear on whether you can move and do an action i guess you can yes you can i guess i guess that's yeah uh i think by my calculation, I have like 20 feet now. Uh, no, because I left my heavy stuff at the inn. I'm going to be up to like 30. So. Yep. Um, Each square is five foot. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. One, two, three. Yep. And I, just just out of the interest yep. of anyone, if you just decide to like scarper and like leg it, basically, mm -hmm. if you move down to where it sort of goes black on the map, you've outpaced this thing and you've got away because it's not moving quickly. Yeah. So basically, what happens is I've got six, so I move to the very edge. Yep. Uh, toss the torch, bring out the archipus, and. Uh, okay. So. Go for it. Roll your misfire first. See with your misfire. Right. So that was. Did we do a D ten and on like one and two? Yeah. Is it is it damp? No, it's not damp. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. So one and two, it doesn't work. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you go you go to fire your archivist and there is a, a sort of loud bang that sort of trails off into like a of smoke. Some of you enjoying your previous exploits, some of the, the shot of powder you went to use must have got damp and you gotta spend some mm -hmm. time like cleaning the damp powder out of it and reloading it. Okay, so there is a, a loud and impressive bang, but obviously not a lot of follow through so we move on to Sasha of River yeah um, okay 
I'm gonna try to see. She will take off her um, 12 apostles and she will try to throw it at the zombie. If she can catch its head, it's good. If not, okay. So, uh, is that like a throw? Yeah, if you if you want to effectively make like a ranged attack, I'm going to say, yeah. however, instead of like beating its AC, because you're not actually damaging it with this, you've only got to roll against like an AC of 10, because you've just got to get it roughly in the area. Okay. Yeah, no problem. So describe how you sort of land, you throw and land your 12 apostles on this guy. Okay, she pushes Spartan back, <clears throat> so she, he's behind her, and she wriggles out of this this bandolier, and she twirls it around like a sling, and throws it towards the zombie, and it catches around his neck. It, indeed, it see. does. As it's, in fact, as it's sort of reaching out with its arm, sort of like towards where you guys are, the bandolier actually sort of goes over its arm and around its neck. So it's like, not with its arm sort of stuck outwards because of this bandolier. And she's kind of hooked down here. Okay, that's absolutely fine. So we move on to Marku, the elf. Marku, you've seen Sasha swirl this sort of bandolier with these 12 apostles, these gunpowder shots on it, and almost lasso like throw it around this walking corpse's neck and okay. shoulder. It ca it's still sort of stumbling forward, seemingly unaware of what's going on. All right. Would I know what the gunpowder does? Is that just not... You know, yeah, a everyone knows that gunpowder, when you light it, goes bang. Right, so I'll run, pick up the torch, which would be near Edwin, right? Yep. So I'm going to be like, here. Yep. And then I'm going to ch chuck it at the zombie... Sorry, that's a thing. I don't know it's a zombie. Sorry, apologies. It, it, it's fine. I, I, don't, I don't mind that. I'm quite a few guys to call it a zombie. Okay, so uh, since you're actually trying to damage it this time, you are going to have to beat its AC with a ranged attack roll. So its AC is 12. Right, so I just need to attack it. Um... Roll a d20. Do I have to... I'm not using many of my weapons, am I? So how do I just roll a d20? You, you, you roll a d20 and add your dex modifier, because it's a ranged attack. Right. Okay, no problem. So I've clicked... Oh. Oh, right. Oh, oh God, right. Sorry. It's fine, roll dude. 20 came with... Roll 20 came up with a pop-up there, I didn't realise. Uh, so I get a bonus of one. Okay, you have hit it. Can you please? What's the what's the damage on your twelve apostles, uh, or rather the weapon that would use them? Uh, D eight. Okay, so since you've thrown all of them, mm -hmm. obviously I'm not going to say you roll like twelve D eight. What I'm going to say is roll three D eight, Matthew, and that sort of represents mm -hmm. how much of it's ignited. Because you're sort of you're not lighting it in the way it's meant to be lit and focusing it, but there's a lot of it. Uh, why did hang on? I roll another one. Yeah, that's fine. And, well, pointless. But thirteen damage. Okay, no problem at all. There is a loud and ear-shattering <laughs> as for a few moments this this thing is engulfed in fire as this torch spins through the air, hits these twelve apostles, these gunpowder shots looped around its neck. There is a huge explosion, blood sprays up into the air and bits of flesh are flung out in all directions. Some of it sort of liberally coats Salazar and Father York who are still near to it. You're about to let out a cry of triumph, Marku, when as the smoke starts clearing, you can see that impossibly the upper torso of this creature is pulling itself along using its one remaining arm to grab hold of the grass and pull itself forward its legs 
have been destroyed. Bits of its rib cage are missing, but basically it's like the head, its right arm, and a bit of its upper torso are sort of pulling itself forward. And I'm gonna say just thematically, there's like little bits of like burnt grass and things around it, and the the, the, the shadows that the, the fire is casting is also kind of like technical like to me. And I'm sort of just kind of looking away, taking a step behind Edwin. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the NPCs. As the Father York sort of obviously is hunched down trying to shield Salazar from this explosion, he turns around and he sees this thing crawling out of the smoke towards him its bones and flesh charred blackened and falling off in chunks as it slowly drags itself along he, he lifts up his holy symbol from around his neck and he's like De dear father in heaven pr pr protect your loyal servant in this hour of need and as he says that this thing just like grabs his leg with its one remaining hand and fastens its jaws onto his leg he lets out a, a high-pitched scream and sort of falls over. And this thing's basically like dragging himself, dragging itself up his body, sort of like biting into him. He's sort of like screaming and thrashing about, trying to let it go. S Salazar, aware that there's not really much he can do, starts sort of like trying to like crawl away, but he's not moving like very quick because he's an old man and he's crawling. Then we move on to Edwin. Edwin, you can see that Father York sort of thrashing about, is screaming oddly high-pitched for, for for a man as this thing sort of biting into him and clawing at him with its remaining hand. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, it's entirely focused on York and eating York, so um, I'm rushing back in. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, right. Uh, okay, as you're rushing back in, Edwin, you can see the fire that was inside has now started to spread to like the exterior of the building, which, like many buildings of the time, is a, a sort of a cladding over like a wattle and daub sort of finish. Mm -hmm. So it's fairly flammable, which is like a big problem at these times in West Haven. As he's, you can see the smoke and curls of flame start licking through the exterior of the building. And it's the crackling of the flames, though, isn't enough to drown out. They're sort of like, ah, 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 like Father York as he's being, <laughs> is being slowly sort of pulled down and like devoured by this creature. Okay. Uh, what did we settle on regarding firing into, I suppose it's a melee, even though York is kind of not participating in it? But <laughs> if, if I remember correctly, like you effectively have to like roll randomly for who you hit i will check that because obviously it's quite important and i want to make mm -hmm. sure i'm getting it right so firing into melee here we go if you're firing into melee you randomly determine who you actually target you do not get to choose if you take a full round to aim one target of your choice counts as two people so at the minute you'd be rolling like a d6 one to three you get the zombie uh, four to six you get father york if you took a full round to aim it'd be like one to two you get father uh -huh. york four to six you get the zombie right uh i'm not taking an entire turn uh on this uh what was the misfire chance on wheel lock stuff i think they were quite good I i'm pretty sure it's just a one they have no additional misfire chances. Yeah, that, that's no. just a one yeah. then. Yeah. There's no extra. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I pull one of the two pistols that I have uh, okay. from our previous escapades in the dun uh, the sea caves. And uh, I take aim. Uh, I'm really close now, so I'm going to blow one of their heads off. <laughs> okay. Roll, roll your misfire uh, first. Oh, no. That, that is... <laughs> That is absolutely fine. You've not rolled a one, so you can still shoot. Now roll me yep. a d6. If you get one to three, you've hit the zombie. Four to six, you've hit Father York. Okay, make, make your attack roll. I, 
I'll, I would tell you that Father York's AC is 10. Because he's just like uh-huh. a dude wearing robes. Yep. Uh, okay, <laughs> as, as Father York's struggling to free himself <laughs> from this zombie, would you care to relate how you dramatically like end Father York's suffering? So, uh, <clears throat> I run towards them. I pull my pistol while I'm taking the last few steps. I stop. I inhale, and in the pause between the inhale and the exhale, I fire. And as before, uh, I'm apparently an incredible marksman with a pistol. And um, uh, yeah, uh, I think it was halfway intentional, or at least like Edwin doesn't seem like he minds either outcome really. So he just, as the sort of corpse is clawing its way up or eating its way up uh, the Father York's chest towards the neck area and the face. Uh, Edwin takes aim, fires, there's uh, the puff of smoke from the uh, pistol itself, and uh, Father York's ah! like high-pitched uh, screech just ends, and uh, it's just a... <laughs> of the corpse. <laughs> Indeed, you notice as you sort of like detonate Father York effectively and his scream is just cut off as you say as he sort of obviously expires sort of pretty quickly mm-hmm. the, the, the the zombie thing just starts like crawling over him as though it's like lost all interest in him so we go on to Sasha <sighs> well she sees this I guess Baden is he, is he with me or is he still there? He, he, ha- he has moved with you. I'll move him up. There we go. Margo, take care of the boy. And she runs over to Salazar. And she doesn't pick him up, but she picks him by the shoulders and just drags him as quickly as she can back. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. If you want, if you've got any movement remaining, if you want to move the rest of your movement, I'll move him next to you as you're sort of like pulling him along. I have one. Okay, so. I'll move him along with you. So uh, until I say otherwise, Salazar will pretty much stay next to you. So wherever you move, okay. Sasha, you'll have until you put him down. You'll have Salazar with you. Because uh, but she, she makes sure she's in, he's in front of her because she, oh, she, yeah. she wants to help, but she won't, you know, help. Yeah, that you don't you don't want to risk your own life to help him. But <laughs> the, the only the only positive for you is luckily because he's quite a frail old man. He seems to weigh like virtually nothing, so you're not going to be like weighed down like carrying like a big muscly dude. It's just like a, an old man you're pretty much like pulling along with you. So that that's absolutely fine. So Marco, as we move on to you, you've seen Sasha go. <laughs> Marco, look after the boy and like push Barden towards you, and then. She runs forward, grabs this old man, Salazar, and starts like dragging him away from this zombie that's like continuing to pull itself forward. I'll take the I'll take the boy's hand and I'll guide him towards where Sasha is and we'll move away from the the burning tower. Okay, that is absolutely fine. So if you want to move it yourself, I will move Barden next to you. There we go. Okay, so. And uh, as Sasha approaches me, because I'm guessing she's heading towards me as I'm dag- like, diagonally coming across, I shout out, Where's William? Is he okay? Because obviously I haven't seen him at this point. Yeah, yeah he, he's fine. <clears throat> okay, so as we move on to the NPCs. The zombie continues dragging itself forward, and it's going to make an attempt to claw at you, Edwin, since you're the only one near to it who is still alive. So, here we go. (laughs) Just bring up its stats, and I'll make that roll for it. So, what is your AC, Edwin? Uh, It's 17 if we're going with like the normal stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. 17. So, here we go. Fuck these jump. <laughs> there is just ninja zombie. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> how how this happens is that like, obviously there's still a lot of smoke in the area from your shot. Uh, 
mm-hmm. as you fired it, and you're sort of like you're wait, you're like waiting for the smoke to clear, so you can sort of like see if this thing's dead or what's happened. You heard the, the screaming stopped, so something's happened, but you can't really see what's going on. When this thing sort of lunges out <laughs> of the smoke, grabs hold of your leg and bites into it, causing you five hit <clears throat> points of damage. So mark those off on your yep. character. I'm down. Okay, so the rest of you, you see what sort of le- what hit points do you want at the minute, Edwin? That's a minus three. <laughs> uh, okay, well, well, it, it, well, it... <laughs> okay, no problem. So, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, minus, minus two, minus two. I, I was going to say I didn't think it'd be minus three, but uh, that's. Okay, so you guys, you see Edwin as this thing like bites into his leg. It sort of pulls him down to the ground. We then move. Obviously, Edwin, you're sort of unconscious at the moment. Mm-hmm. So we're going to move on to Sasha. Sasha, Edwin has been fouled by this creature. It's like a sailor and drops down the old man and. Fuck you, Edwin. <laughs> That's you. That's how I. Uh... God damn. Ah, oh, and she shoots the zombie. Okay, make your attack roll. Well, she hopes you shoot a zombie. <laughs> so I have to roll. I'm not in melee, though. <laughs> yeah, the, the, you have to make a ranged attack roll to hit it. Its uh, AC is 12. Go, go, go. Go, go. No! Okay, you fire off your shot, but you're, you're a little bit worried about hitting Edwin, because obviously it's like crawling up him, so you sort of, your shot goes a little bit wild. No, so da- she's been running, so she's, the pistol is jumping up and down, and she's just wild shotting. Okay, so we come across to Marku. Marku, you've seen your friend Edwin get taken mm-hmm. down. How close is he? To me, how how far away are we talking? Well, well, each of these each of these squares is five foot, so he is thirty feet away from you. If you ever need to measure how far away something is from you, you will see on roll twenty, there's like a little ruler icon. If you click right. on it, you can then click and drag out a line to the square you want to see, and it'll tell you how far away it is. How far can I move? Is I can't remember how this works for, for limitations. Uh, Twenty-five or thirty, I think. Yeah, depending on how encumbered you are. So if you, I mean, I don't know if heavily wounded counts as you have less movement. Not as far as I'm aware. Okay, then it should be thirty, right? Yeah. So I can get to him. Yeah. But I can't pull him away. Dang. Is there any to- other torches around? Any other? You can't see any additional torches behind here. However, the, the the tower like behind you now, behind them, is like a blaze. I mean, literally, the whole scene is now silhouetted by this flickering red and yellow from this burning tower. You can hear the crackling of wood and the sound of exploding glass vials from inside the tower. I. Uh. <laughs> I've got nothing I've got in my inventory is going to help in the meantime. So, is it is it like grab? Is it biting into him? Can ba- I see? Ba- ba- it basically, just... it's it's grabbed hold of its leg, his leg with one its one good hand, and then it's locked its jaws onto his leg. You can see blood spraying down its face. Oh. It's perhaps bitten into an artery or something similar. And you can see that as Edwin's collapsed, he's going like very pale, as like his blood's just draining away into this thing's face oh. and onto the ground. Just just go in and taunt it with your sweet, sweet, sweet blood. <laughs> it's gonna really be like, oh, you want some of this? Oh, are we all just running into the zombie's mouth just one at a time? <laughs> looks, looks like that, way. I insist you eat me first. No, me. No, me. Really? Not him. Damn it. No. Oh, I'm the tastiest. I'm looking after the. Who's the good one? The... I'm looking after the kid and the kid right next to me. Mm. Uh, you are the zombie slayer. Yeah, this is true. I think that's probably the best response I've ever heard. You are the zombie slayer. 
<laughs> I guess. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, wait, I've got... Will I have brought my kit with me? Will I have brought my my gear in my bag? In like I, a bag? I, I, I'm, I'm willing to say that as you were sort of heading out to go with your friends, you could have grabbed your gear out of your room as you went past. That's fine. All right. Also, remember you got a you got a pistol from Sasha, and she will. I, I mean, if you if you survive this and you have forgotten it back at the end, she will kill you. I will if I didn't write it down on my inventory, but if I have it and Joe's okay with it, I will then use that pistol. Yeah, that's fun. As best I can. So, I'm gonna try and aim as f I'm gonna try and aim for the the arm. Like I'm not gonna go for the head of the, the creature because I don't want to blow his leg off. Also, if you, if you shoot me and I survive, I will kill you. Uh, okay, now I will tell you. Bear in mind, as with Edwin, if you are firing into a combat, the person you hit is randomised. So unless you basically, unless you t if you just shoot now you'll have like a 50% chance of hitting Edwin, a 50% chance of hitting the zombie. If you take a full round to aim, effectively you'll have like hot, you'll have less chance of hitting Edwin and you'll have like two thirds of a chance of hitting the zombie. Yeah. What if I'm point blank range? It, 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 it doesn't matter, you're still firing into okay. a combat. Because obviously remember, like it, in actuality, they aren't just sort of statically slogging away at each other. They're sort of like right. Ed Edwin's sort of like got this thing like climbing over him, so it's difficult for you to actually get in and just like shoot it. I'll I'll aim then. I'll take the chance to aim. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do now, before you actually do your attack roll, I'm going to ask you to roll me a d6. If you get a one or a two, you've hit Edwin. Anything else, you've hit the zombie. Ah, awkward. The, 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 this Sir Edwin, what's your AC? Why did I give him a pistol? Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, are we just yeah, against ranged? It's yeah. still 70. Okay, 70. so, Marku, make your attack roll. It's, so it's, it's a d20 plus your dex modifier, and if you beat 17, you've hit Edwin and you've probably finished him off. It would be... Hilarious if you blew my head off. <laughs> However, luckily... I'm not used to using guns. It's all right. Luckily, you've missed. You fire your shot, Marku. And would you care to narrate how you either miss or perhaps you hit Edwin, but you fail to damage him? <laughs> like, so I'm cool aiming. I'm, I'm, I don't quite know how to aim, so I'm like... Kind of like that. And I, I line up my shot, just like, yeah, just like I'm watching these guys do, hoping I don't get near this thing. And like then the little kid just kind of like grabs my leg, trying to be scared, just knocks me off, and I kind of ding his armor on the shoulder. Indeed, there's I a loud, like, for a second, there's a loud <laughs> dung as this shot spangs off Edwin's armor. Sometimes this could be an incompetent. I like the idea of the bullet hitting Edwin in the shoulder and just like ricocheting from the armor into the zombie and it doesn't care. Okay. <laughs> that would be. That would be. <laughs> now, since, since you're still alive, Edwin, the zombie is mm -hmm. going to continue trying to eat you. Obviously, it's still, got, it's still got to hit you because it's got to get through your <laughs> yeah. armor. If you're on armor, yeah. I'd just be like, it's just doing you that damage. Yeah, it's just like, nom. <laughs> so I'm going to make a roll for that. <laughs> okay, come on, John. <laughs> it was meant to be. Sorry, dude. And no problem, though. No. Uh, okay, so as as you watch, uh, your rest in peace f for a few moments, Marku. You're like, oh, thank thank God, I've I've, I've not killed Edwin. Then, as you watch, this zombie like <laughs> crawls up to him, and it literally just like bites into the corner of his head, and just like rips away part of his skull. Part of his like brains come with it. I just stare in aghast and horror. I'm just like, that was that's the horrible thing I've ever seen. It's horrible, horrible. Okay, as as Edwin sort of lifelessly falls <laughs> to the ground, again this zombie seems like at the instant he's dead, it's just like boom, it loses interest in him. And it starts like crawling over him, which is obviously heading towards you, Sasha. But since it's done its action, it it can't do like an extra attack on you or anything. So 
we I'll take Edwin off the initiative order. We then move on to you, Sasha. Uh, obviously, but before gonna... sorry, before we go on to you, Sasha. Obviously, if you want to start like rolling a new character at this point, Johannes, feel free. Yep. Yep. Edwin, Doing that second. <laughs> <laughs> of, co of, course, of course, if you wanted to play the young boy who's currently with you, you could do that. That'd be a potential in, because we've not really defined anything about him other than the fact he helps out the the sage, so he could be whatever class you wanted. If you want to do something else, feel free. Uh, how, to be honest, you could even do Salazar if you wanted, because we've not really defined a load about him yet. Hmm. Or you could do something entirely different. It's entirely up to yeah. you. I I'll, I'll think about it. Okay, no Bloody problem. zombie. Oh yeah, can I be the zombie? Because he only rolls crits. It's just... Be a filthy royalist. <laughs> to, to, to be fair, man, you know, I honestly wish that like, occasionally when I played a game, I could get some of these amazing rolls that I get for yeah. these, these fucking zombies. Because like, my rolls are for shit when I play. Yeah. yeah, it's the same with me. When I when I run games, it's just like I just demolish, accidentally demolish yeah. people. And when you're playing, it's just like, well, that's another one, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so, sorry, Sasha, go ahead. Okay, so um, um, is it an um, action to draw a weapon in this game? Okay, she's so gonna draw the other pistol she has and fire it at the zombie. Okay. And I'm guessing there's no mischance now, or um, <laughs> there's a mischance, but there's no. There's, there's no. There's no danger of you hitting anybody else. Yeah. So the pistol fires, and let's see if she hits. Eleven. Oh my. Okay. Now, bear in mind that since you haven't moved, you could have actually aimed, which would give you enough to hit. Well, is that a bonus? Yeah, it, it would give you a bonus to hit. Can I do that later, actually? Norm normally, you wouldn't be able to, but since we're all getting used to the rules at this stage, if, if you wanted to have aimed, I'm quite happy for you to have done that. Sure, I mean, I roll 11, I need a 12 to hit, right? Exactly, yeah. So, okay, well, uh, that, that will be beneficial, so I'll take that. Okay, and so it only had three hit points left, so you've actually finished it. So feel free to describe the, the sort of, no doubt, gory way that it expires. Okay, so he drops the, <clears throat> the empty pistol and fast draws the other one and kind of Jabs it into the side of the zombie and just pulls the trigger and splashes it rib cage out, and just stands there in shock and looking back at back at Marco and looking at Edwin being half eaten. Damn it! Okay, as you look over at Edwin, suddenly the body starts to twitch. Oh my god! Really, dude? You're a zombie now? You can keep playing your character. <laughs> ah, she drops the pi she drops the pistol and draws her short swords and cuts his head off, hoping that will do it. Okay, we'll deal with that on your next turn since obviously you've already like done an attack for this turn. Uh, we're going to go on to Marku. Marku, you've also <laughs> noticed like the body twitching. Obviously, you've seen Sasha like jumping back a bit and like drawing a sword. Good God. Is anyone else around, or is it just just us? What happened to the crowd? The the crowd pretty much just like legged it. They were like, "Oh shit, son, there's a zombie in that fucking tower," and they just like ran away, like all sort of heading back to the village as fast as their little legs will carry them. Yeah, they had sense. So the Sal Sal's are still alive, but the priest is dead. Yep. And still no sign of William. Right. Yeah, because I've seen why you all you like, are dying, like William's yeah. like, whistling a happy tune. He's like, oh, they call me the yeah. church robber, you know my name. Uh, I got all the gold. I got all the fishes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fuck you guys, I'm off! <laughs> <laughs> so at the moment, I'm just going to stay with the kid. That's probably the, the, the best thing for me to do, is just stay with the kid for the moment. I'm in no condition to move. Okay, so we go on to the NPCs. Okay, so Edwin, I'm going to ask, can you please make me an attack roll against Sasha? Uh, is it just punching or are we yeah, talking it's, weapons? It's just punching. Uh, 
Okay, uh, I I don't remember what the unarmed or well, you have some sort of damage stats probably. Yeah, it since due to your unholy strength at the moment, it will be d6. Yeah, so I'll just do this uh, a minute. So yeah, and and Sasha's AC is one, thirteen. One d six, right? Okay, so I'm rolling. That. Uh, there we go. That's a seven. Okay, so Sasha, as you're drawing your sword, <coughs> the body of Edwin sort of like lurches almost drunkenly to its feet, like a, a marionette puppet, as someone has just like grabbed the strings and pulled it into an upright stance. And without any of the finesse that you know of Edwin in life, all of the the combat skills seemingly gone. It just the body of your friend just begins to sort of like lunge towards you, grasping with its arms, his his teeth and gnashing. But you're able to sort of step back away and not get grabbed by him. Sure, go, Sasha. Well, my, my AC would be fourteen, right? Because I'm wearing a buff coat. I don't know why I, it hasn't calculated that. I, okay, that's fine. The, the attack still wouldn't have hit you anyway. Yeah, but as he sees that. See, it's like, okay, fuck it, I'm out of here, you know, fuck it, bolt, leave. Okay, are, are you grabbing bye, bye. Salazar on the way past, or? Um, why are you at that? Yeah, okay. You don't have to, you can just be like, fuck you, old man, and that. Uh, um, she'll, she'll grab him as he runs, kind of like a, a football, grabbing up a, a football. Yeah, that's fine, move, move yourself to where you want to be, and I'll put him next to you. Like I say, he weighs virtually nothing. As you sort of run past him, it's like, oh my god, my, my, the, the tower, it, it, it's my, my life's work, it is, it is burning in front of me. And you're like, yeah, zombies, deal with it. And try to grab him, and like, drag him away as he's like, oh, my tower, my home. But, but he, he doesn't have enough strength left to, like, protest against you, pretty much carrying him. As you guys are sort of looking back, you can see Edwin sort of like, or at least the body of Edwin, still sort of like staggering towards you. But now he has the. The slot, the slow, somber, staggering gait of one of these foul, undead creatures. But before we continue, there we're going to jump back to our would-be, ch well, I say would-be church robber, our very successful church robber, William. Okay, so you were searching around the church, William, if I'm yeah, I'm correctly. Okay, I'm so looking on the floor and all the walls and yeah. Okay, so you're searching around the church. You don't find it at first. You don't find anything concealed at all. However, as you're moving around and you're like tapping the floor with your poles and you're tapping the walls and stuff like that, you do come across one of the flagstones sort of on the floor. And as you tap it, it has a slightly different sound to the others. Okay. Um, I'm trying to look at this specific. Um, stone and see if it's free, if I can move it, if I can pull it out, and p press it down, something like that. Yeah, as you look around, you can see that unlike the others, which are sort of mortared down to the floor and sort of linked together, this one has like a small sort of gap between it and the other flagstones. You think you could possibly just about get your fingers down into this gap and like lift this stone block out? I try to use my 10 foot pull for that. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely fine. Using a lever, very sensible. You lever this this tablet out, and as you do so, you can see that underneath it is what appears to be a wooden trapdoor. Hmm. Okay. And you can see there is some, as you sort of write, you've levered the stone out. You can see there is some writing on the back of the stone, and it says, Here lie the forefathers and the forebears of the noble harrison family okay i'm pretty sure i never heard of this so let's look just check it out i'm trying to open the um, trap door with my 10 foot pole somehow yeah that's absolutely fine the, the, like most trap doors it has like a sort of metal ring in it you could put the pole through it and like lever it up to make it a bit easier on yourself yeah that would be yeah i'm, I'm trying to fun. keep a distance from the thing in case it is trapped so okay no problems as you lever 
this up there's a sort of blast of stale air that comes out from underneath it uh, it doesn't cause you any harm or anything you can just tell that like obviously like, no one's been down here for a while it's not been disturbed for quite some time as you look down you can just about make out a small sort of set of stone stairs heading downwards but all below is in darkness okay i pull out my lantern and light my lantern okay no problems just give me a moment to stick you on the other map Okay, William. And I'm trying to close the um, side so that only the part which I'm um, lighting up is actually illuminated so they can't see me from other angles. Okay, that's absolutely fine. And I believe this is a standard lantern, like a 30 foot radius, I'm assuming. Yeah, exactly. Okay. No I'm trying to use it like a flashlight currently. Okay, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to move the players over to the new map and let me know if you can see what is immediately surrounding your character. Okay, one second. Okay. Yeah, I found me. Upper left, uh, right corner. Yep. There is blue. I think I suppose the blue stuff is the walls. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I can move myself. Yeah. As you're sort of looking down the, the the light cast by your lamp, you can see you're effectively in what appears to be a small stone sepulchre or tomb of some kind, perhaps where sort of nobles were laid to rest in the past when this church was used for such things like I say obviously no one's been down here for some time there is a long stone corridor ahead of you and at regular intervals off to the left and right of the corridor there are small stone chambers okay um i'm going into dungeoneering mode which basically means i take my 10 foot pole into uh, take my lantern in my one hand my 10 foot pole i clamp behind my um, axles and i'm tapping all the steps i'm making all the time so i'm walking really slowly tapping the ground and the and the walls while i'm moving and trying to look into this room okay that's absolutely fine as you sort of peer around the corner you're tapping as you go along i'll let you know if you find anything obviously as you peer around the corner into this stone chamber it's a very small sort of square chamber about 15 foot by 15 foot as you look in you can see that on the three walls opposite the entrance there are shelves each of those stone shelves each of them have what appear to be coffins on them you can also see that there are a number of statues in here each of them appears to show an armored person uh, a warrior in a slightly archaic sort of full sort of medieval style of armor which isn't very sort of popular or common nowadays each of them has their arms crossed across their chest and they are holding a sword or some sort of weapon clasped under their arms um are they uh... Are they life-sized statues or something you can take with you? They, they are indeed life-size statues. And I'll just do you a quick sketch to show where they are. Basically, these red circles are where the statues are. And along the walls, sort of here, here, and here, are where the shelves are with the coffins on them. Okay. Um, I think I'm just snooping into the other room and check if there's something interesting there and then I would go out again. Okay, the, the room opposite it appears to be almost identical to this one. Again, three statues, slightly different. Each of these statues appears to depict a different person. It's not people that you're familiar with, but each of them has slight differences in like the armor, the face of the people. The, the statues are very well carved, very lifelike. They are, they are statues, but they've also been crafted with some skill and it's the same in the the opposite room okay um i'm making a mark on with my um uh how is it called again <laughs> 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 
of my chalk on the walls and marking the rooms as potential loot rooms and uh, marking all the stone uh, marking the point where I tapped the stones yeah so fine. these are these are checked and I'm going back up and trying to hide the trapdoor again yeah that is absolutely fine not a problem so I'll move back to the tower map and I would try to walk to, um, out of the church and towards the tower afterwards. That is absolutely fine. You have no problems covering up your tracks. You head up out of the church, you shut the door behind you. You've got you've got all of your sort of ill-gotten gains and you start heading towards the tower. As you look towards the tower, you can see a, a like panicked mass of villagers like running back towards Porthcrawl. They're all screaming at the well quite a lot of them are screaming at the tops of their voices although they've been running for quite a while now so a few of them are getting out of breath you can you can hear broken snatches of conversation although they're still quite far away from you 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 make out the words devilry witchcraft okay i start running okay oh, what's the tower you start running towards the tower i'll let you know when you arrive there because you've got a bit of a distance to run so yeah. i'm going to jump back to the people at the tower we are currently on Sasha's turn, I believe. Let's get the fuck out of here as he's dragging the old man, pushing the elf and shouting at the little boy as he's running. So uh, she's, just, she's just gonna bolt down the, the hill away from the tower. Okay, that is absolutely fine. So I'm going to remove Sasha and Salazar as Sasha pretty much like p pushing you, Mark, who sort of like runs past, like carrying this old man who's still like, oh no, my life's work, it is burning. And like runs off into the distance as fast as her little legs will carry her. We then go on to Marku. Marku, you've still got the young boy Barden with you. You can see this the shambling, rotting remnants of your once friend slowly stumbling towards you, this low groan echoing from his ruined throat his arms held out towards you as he shambles ever closer what are you doing by the ancestors things have gone to shit all of a sudden right um i'm gonna grab the kid and i'm gonna follow sasha and i like i said i've just i came out of the tavern things have just kicked off and i'm still sure as now edwin seems to have lost his mind uh does he, has uh -huh. he left his I will tell you that there is there is no doubt in your mind that like, oh, yeah, yeah. Edwin, Edwin yeah. is dead. dead. Like, yeah. Half his yeah. head is missing. <laughs> Has he left his gun lying around? Yeah. Or that all all of his kit is just lying on the ground where he fell. When he sort of went when, when yeah. like the zombie version of him rose up, he didn't make any attempt to pick any of that up. No, nothing. I'm gonna scoop it up if I can, um, or will that require me to go near? You you will have to go near the zombie because it's like moved like one square for away from where it was. So I know I'm going to leave it then. I ain't going to go anywhere near it. Just okay, gonna... not a problem. So you guys are far enough away now that if you want, <laughs> you can just get the hell out of Dodge. That is absolutely yeah. fine. So what I'm going to say now is as you guys run, you will meet, obviously, William running towards the tower in the opposite direction. And now I'm going to turn it over to you guys as you all sort of like run into each other. You, um, William, you can see... Sasha like carrying this old man. You can see Marku dragging this like young boy with him, running in the, running away from the tower, like towards Porth Crawl, and you meet each other in the middle. Go. Okay. Edwin is uh, dead. Edwin's is dead. She dropped Okay, I'm drawing my bow and um, get, draw get, an, get, an, load the pistols now. I I hand her one of the pistols. <clears throat> Where? Uh, up there. Up there. Um. Okay, I'm running up there, trying no! to keep. No. <laughs> trying to keep cover behind the um, the the, um, the trees. That's absolutely fine. Make me a, a stealth style roll, please. We, we we need to establish if we survive this uh, vocabulary of the party. When someone <laughs> says "dead Edwin," it doesn't mean charge the head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Okay, so so what I'm going to say happens is, Sasha, as you're sort of like you're reaching out to like grab like William to be like, oh no no don't go, you've sort of like slipped away into the shadows, William. So describe how you've sort of stealthed away, basically. 
Um, I'm basically trying to hide behind bushes and crawl the most most of the part pretty fast, but um, I'm trying to be in staying behind the the floor. And because it's already dark outside, it's not that hard to hide. Okay, so basically, as you reach around, Sasha, to sort of like go, oh, William, no, there's just like a, a rustling of foliage near you, and like William is like gone. God damn, old man! <laughs> but he looks angry as hell. Is... <laughs> what have you, you, got, done? you got? But you got your pistol. Yeah, see, she points the pistol angry at him. So, oh, so, I so, should shoot you so, right so now. So as I like holds up his hands and he's like, "Please, please, it, it was not my fault. They, they, they forced me." Um, she steps on his hand. Please, ah, please, please, they, they. they <laughs> They, they took my they took my my daughter that they, they made me do it it she looks at Baden. but ba Baden's obviously still looking like he's like shitting himself unsurprisingly just is so, this true does he, he have a daughter he, he nods and says um yeah oh yeah so she she, she she's not the the, ma the master's uh, real daughter but he he, he did adopt a uh, a young woman who he, he treats as his daughter. Uh, he, he he told me that um, she she'd gone away on a trip. Salazar were like, "We used to stood on his hand." It's like, I, I I told that to the boy because I I knew they would yeah. kill him if they if he, if they thought he knew the truth. Yeah, I bet you treated her real good. As he kicks him in the side. Oh oh, no, the police! I, I would do it, do anything for my daughter, even work on. Oh, on that one, holy gin for them. <sighs> okay, 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 okay. Um, I need gunpowder. Do you have any gunpowder, my cool lady? Whatever your name is. The thing is loaded. Yeah, but she has the extra pistol. Oh, okay. And she I got kinda, some. She kind of threw all the gunpowder she had away. So, so you're asking Marco if he has any gunpowder? Yeah. I. Unless you I give me some. Need... You need gunpowder. Uh, I usually use a knife. Do you see the town's quiet? It doesn't require guns. I don't know what you guys are riled up, but things have got out of control here. What happened to Edwin's face? He got eaten by this unholy abomination. This wizard spawned. And he looks angry at Celesta. This wild... Uh, as he steps on his hand again. <laughs> okay, so we need. Oh, fuck, fuck. We need to. We can run straight for it. Okay, so you point, can you can still fight, right? I mean, you, you got a few fights left in you, right? I as mean, you ask you that question, fight. I'm going to cut away for the moment. And I'm going to ask <laughs> William, can you please roll me a d6 for your initiative? Sure. A five. Okay, lovely. that okay so william as you let me just get rid of some of those because they're no longer there okay so william as you sort of reach the area outside the tower you can see this mangled and partially devoured form of like edwin still sort of like shambling slowly forward it appears to be whatever it is now, it appears to be moving quite slowly due to, you can see that half its leg appears to have like been eaten, so it's like stumbling quite slowly. Mm -mm. But it's like okay. very slowly just moving forward, its arms held out, half its face missing. Uh, I'm trying to circle around him and um, try to get behind him and aim and then attack him with my bow. N no problems, go for it. That would be plus six on my roll. Mm -hmm. So move yourself to where you want to be and make the, the shot. Sure, I want to be somewhere here. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Okay. <clears throat> uh, short bow and attack. Donus plus six. Eleven. Okay, that is not enough to beat Edwin's AC. Plus six. Yeah, it's a plus three rolled. 
Okay, okay. so okay. You, you, you're shooting a bow at him, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so you fire <clears throat> your arrow, it spangs off one of his like armor plates that he's still wearing, probably like the dented remnants of his helmet, at which point this, the remains of Edwin, it sort of swings around and it shambles towards you and it is going to try and attack you. So Edwin, can you please make me an attack roll? Nope. Okay. However, due to its sort of its slow nature and the fact that its leg is mangled up, as it's flailing at you, you're able to sort of backstep and sort of keep moving away from it so its arms flail at empty air. Okay, um uh, I'm trying to run away and hide again. Okay, that's fine. Now, in order to in order to basically speed this up, so we've not just got you like chasing around with this like zombie. Yeah, this, this I would try hit and run all the time. Until yeah, but ba dead. basically, this this zombie is like pretty much like almost dead anyway because it was like mangled quite badly. So, if you're willing to spend a few minutes doing that, I'm quite willing to assume I'm that, that you're more than willing to do. Yeah, that, yeah. So, so you you dance around, but you gradually wear this thing down until it collapses onto the floor. There is a loud clang as the remnants of Edwin's helmet roll off. Okay. And I'm trying to look around and loot whatever I can from him. Okay, that's absolutely fine. So, since you're in the area where his equipment is anyway, I'll leave that up to um, yourself and Johannes to sort out at some point, so he knows exactly what kit yeah. he's carrying. Just, just give me a list and I'll pick out what I take. <laughs> Is this when uh, Sasha is coming up there because she was running up to help him? Yeah, so you will, you will arrive just after William has finished like gathering up all the loot. Um, okay. How many arrows did I waste on this? It would probably have taken you four arrows. Okay. That's uh, real good. Oh, good. You're alive. What did you expect? I point. Uh, I poke. I poke at um, the dead guy. That, well, obviously, a dead you will be killed and a zombie. And I, I don't. Can can a demon be a zombie? I am not exactly sure myself. As you look down, Sasha, you can good see that, like, good news. There's though. arrows sticking out of Edwin's body. You can. You can pretty yeah. much guess what happened here. I've got okay. some good news, though. And I give her the musket from him and uh, pull out stuff off from his uh, uh, from his bags. Oh, I found some. F did he freeze or did I freeze? Um, no, I think it was him. Okay. Well, well he's dramatically um, so. Yeah. Since you pick up uh, the pistols he dropped and yeah. um, anything else um, he hasn't picked up, she really wants the breastplate. Okay, we well, you've certainly been given the arquebus that Edwin had. So, but again, I'll leave uh, Johannes to sort of like give you all like details of Edwin's equipment, etc. That can be done in the Facebook group. It's sort. gene locked to his to his hand only. <sighs> okay, so he had my he had my jacket on, so obviously you'll take that back. I mean, it's my jacket. <clears throat> um. As you're sort of doing this, you glance towards the tower. You can see that like, the tower is now literally this huge column yeah, of flame. The whole thing is on fire. Okay, so how much... I mean, does he still look like Edwin? Or does he like have any obvious zombie traits? It is, it's difficult to tell because he was quite badly sort of mangled up by the original zombie. Okay. Oh, this is... She's gonna let him keep the jacket on and kind of pull it together, so tie up uh, one of the belts, so she'll keep his remains and she'll drag him, so she can bury him on, at some point. Yeah, that's and um, she'll she'll drag her comatose brother with her. Yeah, no problems. I will take everything, Johannes. 
How much money did he have? Okay, how much money did your character have on him? Okay, uh, sorry. Don't know what's up here. It, it's fine. It, if you guys look in the chat, Johannes has kindly not posted a list of his of his character's equipment in it. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. yeah. I assume we take everything, right? Yeah, we take the most important stuff. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure the, the armor is too heavy, maybe, but. No. Can, can I just say, Johannes P, I, I like the additional detail of what's drenched in zombie blood. Yeah, that was yeah because it's, it's important. <laughs> just, just touch it's a nice touch. with an asterisk or something. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 she she will keep him in in the in the high wearing coat, uh, and drag him or carry yep. him <clears throat> uh, back with her because uh, he um, was kind of he was the friend, so she will give him a nice burial. Well, she will give her ba him a burial. It's not certain it would be nice, but a burial at least. Why do you want to bury him? He's an enemy now. Because he was our friend. <sighs> Did you know him any better? What, what are you talking about? He was our friend. He's way more our friend than that stupid elf. Well, if you say so. I was, as I I'm said, I'm right I here, guys. I'm right here. <laughs> I, as I said, I found something, and I pull out the idol and show it shortly to him. And I've got a bit more of it, and I put it back in. Cool. There's um, a crypt underneath the church. I looked into it shortly, but this could be a, a dungeon. Oh. Um. Okay. Well, let's. Um. Uh, um hmm. What happened well, here? You burned something and some zombies and what? What is going on? Yeah, I mean the mob kind of went <clears throat> a mark in 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 the tower and they burned it down and this zombie came out and uh, we managed to blew it up with some gunpowder and then uh, it killed Edwin and he rose like a zombie and um, we decided in this, this zombie Edwin we'll just get uh, out of here and then you came along and killed him so yeah good we need someone else to draw a text from zombies now yeah okay we have the elf so he doesn't look like he can take much more well we have to be young boy then well, let's see. Well, let's just get him down. And um, is the, uh, has Marco came, come up, or have you come down to Marco? What I'm going to say is, you guys have sort of you, you've obviously had this conversation. You've walked back to where Marco is. So effectively, all of you guys and Barden and Salazar is like cradling his like is mercilessly stomped on hand. You're all sort of like in the same area, halfway between the, the tower and the okay. village. So our friend died trying to remedy your mistake. Where's your daughter at? Was she taken by the royalist? It's holding his hand and sort of like whimpering stuff. He's, yes, yes, they they, they, they came to, to my tower. They, they bought that, that gin with them. They said that if... Uh, they they told me they had taken my daughter while while she was out gathering herbs for me, and they said that if I ever wanted to see her again, I I had to 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 work on that creature. They they wanted to find a way to to use it like some kind of weapon. I think. Okay, so the gin is the the king thing. Y yes, w w where where I come from in in Easterland, we we believe that uh, occasionally when someone dies and the the, the proper burial rites are not observed, evil spirits can possess their bodies and cause them to to rise from their graves. I I secured the creature as as strongly as I could, but uh, when when the the, the villagers ran into 
ran into my tower. They they must have they, they must have freed it somehow. I don't I don't yeah. I don't know. She kind of looks down at her booth. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so we have to save your daughter, I guess. Is she um? Where is she? I I, I don't know. I. <laughs> All, all I know is they said they had taken her, and if I ever wanted to see her again, I would I would perform these experimentations on the the gin for them, and I would tell no one of it, or I would never see my beloved daughter again. That's why I don't even I don't even tell my my young apprentice uh, what what was really going on. I I told him I had some sensitive uh, experiments in the laboratory, and I forbade him to go in there. Why should we help him? We're not helping him, we're helping her, obviously, and she rolls her eyes. Mm. If you say so. Okay. <clears throat> well, please, if you, we if, if, you if, if you help rescue my daughter, I, 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 m m many of my p possessions are, have burned. He says, looking back into the distance, like the column of like black smoke issuing forth from the still burning tower. But w what whatever I do, there, there is a there is a storeroom in a, a stone, an old stone cellar, but below the tower, I have some possessions in there. Whatever I have, I, I, I would give, I would gladly give to you if you will save my daughter, please. I mean, we could take it now if you want it, but we we'll probably need to wait to find. Let's go. We we'll go back to the inn, and uh, we hope that the village isn't all riled up. Oh, um, I had to break into the church. It could be that they got it from now on. Oh, well, well, the priest is dead. So. Mm. Oh, that's helpful. So, um, yeah, that's... Um, Maybe we should lay low. We now have a tent. I pull it out. Mm -hmm. Could be a bit of a witch hunt now in the city. Well, maybe not. I mean, we are new. There are some guys dead. Something is burned. We rally the mob. Doesn't sound like the best circumstances for us to stay safe. Just okay. saying. Okay. What 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 circumstances did you leave the inn on, Marco? Was it done good terms or bad terms? Uh, I d I don't think. I don't think it was bad terms. I just, I, saw, I heard all the noise and and the, I saw the smoke and the pitchforks and I, I wonder what I, I wonder you guys were in trouble. So I came to see what the hell's going on. And then I saw I Edwin. And I found you. And well, we need to go back after our stuff. So I think we should go back to the inn. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, okay. I mean, I'd be okay staying in a tent outside the town. I mean, I'm just saying, I'd be okay. I'd be a fan with that. Yeah, but I want my stuff. I mean, it's my stuff. Uh, okay, so as as we're getting on for sort of like half past nine, and um, Johanna said you needed to sort of finish a little bit early. I think mm -hmm. as you guys are heading back to the inn, that seems like a logical point to sort of wrap it up rather than sort of get halfway through something else. So as you, I'll just give you like a quick roundup as you guys head back to the inn. You can see that. The town still appears to be largely deserted. However, as you look to the sort of the southwest, where you can see the the sort of Harper family residence, the sort of the nobles who own the land around this area, you can see that like the mob has like gathered outside like the Harper family residence. Perhaps they're going to to their lord to like demand he do something or something. You're not sure, but the the town is largely empty the only person who will still be there that you will obviously run into will be the the red-headed innkeeper's wife poppy who will be at the sirens whisper which is where you guys are going uh, she'll quite happily greet you guys she doesn't appear to know anything really about what's gone on at the tower she's pretty much been inside the inn sort of getting a bit of sleep um, she comes down blurry eyed let, let you guys in obviously you're staying at the inn so you guys rocking up in the middle of the night and be like, oh, i want to get to our rooms that's fine you notice that um, as she sees marco she sort of like gives him a bit of a, a knowing wink and a, a cheeky little smile at him 
but I'm going to turn this over to you guys now. If you want to have like a last conversation or like a last wrap, if there's anything you want to say, you, she'll sit you down, give you some of this fish soup, some drinks, etc. She locks the door after you've come in, puts a candle on the table, etc. Tells you that uh, she's got to open up early in the morning. So she says, "Oh, but besides, uh, th th this evening's qu quite quite tired me out." And if she says that again, she gives that Marco another wink and just sort of like lays a hand on his shoulder and lets it like linger there for a few moments and then she says so i'll i'll leave you all to it uh, there's a stew there and some bread and some some cheese uh, uh please uh st stay up as long as you want if you need other candles there is a, a box of them on the bar there uh, good good night to you all and she she heads into her own quarters so if you guys want to have like a last conversation to wrap up while you're sat in the sirens whisper you can now do so so we got our stuff. What's next? So you want to save this guy's daughter? Will this stop these ungodly things? Look, looking at Sasha. Obviously, Salazar and Barden are still with you as well. Although they're not no. really saying a lot. I mean, no, no, no. So the daughter is where exactly? Well, we don't know. So we'll go find an. <clears throat> well, let's not ask, and so we'll go over to the box and take a couple of candles and put down in in one of Will's backpacks and some bread. <clears throat> some that, that's fine. That's fine. You have like a you have a, one lot of rations and a couple of candles. Yeah, I gotta like check my He's, my load nice afterwards. Him. I will um, probably be completely overload. So okay, pardon, and she goes down on her, her knees. <clears throat> yes, coming. You you come with with us. Um, you're gonna be our little helper, and um, she'll take uh, one of uh, the fancy hat from uh, from Edwin, which doesn't appear to have blood on it, and she'll put that on his head. So you're one of us now. You you, you put it on his head, and he, he he's despite the fact he obviously still looks like a little bit shell shocked by everything that's happened. I mean, you can't really blame him, but um, he he does sort of like smile widely as you put this hat on him and he says well well uh, uh, at the moment I, I am pledged to to be the apprentice to 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 master salazar but uh if he will let me i i, I would love to come with you at which point salazar so like, again he's almost like not really paying attention he's like cradling his like hand and he says yes of course if it will if it will help m my daughter yes pl please t take the boy yeah, well, thanks. We'll take the boy then. Mm. So, um, I think for safety reasons, we should leave the village and camp in the wilderness for the night. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Maybe we should get something to transport, maybe a mule or something, but it's not. I'm not sure how to get it in the night, so... Are you guys planning to head to like your usual camping spot? Yeah, exactly. I'm not. Yeah. I mean, we have we have tons of stuff to transport currently because we have one less party member. Yeah, I mean, I mean. <clears throat> At which point, B Barden's like, w w well, well, I can help you carry some things. Yeah, sure you can. That would be helpful. Yes. Uh, I give uh, him the backpack of our deceased friend and put some stuff in. He, he sort of staggers a little under the weight, but he's obviously trying like not to show like how heavy it is, and he's sort of like, yeah, yes, I, I think I can manage this. I pull the straps and and cut it around him, pretty professional looking. You do this hoop th through this, and this hoop through this, and pull it really tight, or else you will get back pain, pretty oh, fast. Oh, 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 oh th 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 thank you, sir. Good. I'm looking at all the others. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and you guys head off to your normal camping spot. And as you make camp for the evening, you know, you set watches, make a fire, all the normal sort of stuff. That is where we are going to bring an end to the session. And I will give you all 100 XP for the session. I'm quite happy to chat for a while after the the broadcast is finished, but I'm going to end the recording now. 100, okay.